Around 925 million people in the world today are undernourished, the number one risk to health worldwide. As a result, considerable efforts are being made to improve food security across the globe. Food security was defined at the World Food Summit in 1996 as being when all people at all times have access to sufficient, safe, nutritious food to maintain a healthy and active life. It's Twin's opinion that although food safety is recognized when describing food security, in practice, it has been overlooked, with the focus going on increasing quantity rather than the safety of food consumed by people who struggle to feed their families. The problem associated with controlling and eating aflatoxin-contaminated food is a prime example of this. Aflatoxin affects a quarter of the world's crops including key staples, such as maize. The full extent of this immense global public health risk is only now starting to be understood. The toxin occurs in regions between 40 degrees north and 40 degrees south of the equator, potentially causing harm to four and a half billion people. Aflatoxin is an issue in groundnuts and in most grain crops. Basically, aflatoxin comes out of uh, a fungus that exists in the soil, aspergillus flavus. When certain conditions prevail in the soil, like moisture stress, it multiplies and therefore it grows on the grain and produces a toxin, which is carcinogenic. Therefore, we do not want any of the products that our farmers are producing to have aflatoxin. Uh, we NASA members speak more when we are chatting at home, like here I've got flames, so I have the nuts, eh? and so I'm selecting the bad ones, I want to throw them away. And so they say, ah, oh, give me, I'm going to use it in my home. No, I say, I tell them, no, this is not good, it's bad. You can have, you can take your disease from this. Say, ah, oh, how? I've been taking this for long. No, I say, no, you are just lucky. Side effects that can come about from eating aflatoxin contaminated food is uh, what we call um, more, more chronic toxicities. You know, um, if children are exposed to it when they are, when they are really young, then they become stunted. Um, they, they are basically underweight. And um, um, other side effects are things like, uh, I mean, you, you become more prone to infection. So basically it compromises your immunity and that's why some people have linked it to the prevalence of HIV and AIDS. It's because of immunosuppression. It suppresses your, your immunity. And obviously um, cancer, liver cancer. Ground nuts are an important part of people's diets in Malawi and provide a source of essential protein and unsaturated fats to many who cannot afford to buy meat. Um, in terms of um, ground nuts specifically, we're looking at the issues of aflatoxins. And aflatoxins have a big impact on, um, they contribute to malnutrition. And uh, there have been studies that have been done, preliminary research shows that um, aflatoxin, con aflatoxin contamination uh, contributes to stunting, contributes to cancer, contributes to you know other diseases. So it is important that um, as a country, the ground nuts that we're producing are free of aflatoxins, so that um, what children consume, what women consume, is free of aflatoxins. Recent research suggests that aflatoxin exposure contributes to up to a quarter of all new liver cancer cases globally and the children whose growth is stunted can have 30 to 40 percent higher aflatoxin levels in their blood. Many factors can contribute to aflatoxin contamination in groundnuts. In smallholder value chains, high moisture levels and temperatures post-harvest are a particular problem. It's these conditions which encourage fungal growth and the production of aflatoxin. We've done studies here in Malawi and also we are, we are doing the same in Zambia 
and what we've been able to show. I mean, we, we've tested um, groundnuts sample from, from homesteads, and what we've been able to show is that um, people are exposed to high levels of af aflatoxin contamination. And some of the nuts, um, I mean, the, the aflatoxin content is, you know, above 1,000 parts per billion, which is, which is extremely high. I guess the biggest issue with aflatoxin is that there are many points of ingress and how you handle the nuts from harvest up to blanching has a great effect on the level of aflatoxin that you will find in the final product. And for example, for me, the way the peanuts are shelled by hand is one of the biggest challenges because um, shelling by hand is very hard, so they wet the nuts in order to make shelling easier and aflatoxin uh, is affected by moisture because it's basically produced by a mold, so if you've got high moisture content, mm, aflatoxin will develop easier. As well as being a public health issue, aflatoxin contamination has also resulted in Malawi and Sub-Saharan Africa having difficulties competing in export markets. The World Bank estimates that European Union regulations on aflatoxin cost Africa $750 million each year in exports of cereals, dried fruit and nuts. Uh, many years ago, in the 50s and 60s, Africa was a major supplier of groundnuts into Europe uh, before the likes of uh, the US and Argentina came on the scene. But that came to a pretty rapid halt in 1979 when the first aflatoxin regulations were introduced in Europe. And since then, the exports from Mal Malawi have been more or less non-existent. And the main, uh, the main problem we have about getting into Europe is the, the quality, um, specifically aflatoxin. Much of the work to date on aflatoxin in groundnuts has focused on ensuring that the quality and safety of groundnuts meet export standards. Twin is now proposing an approach that tackles the aflatoxin problem in food consumed within the country to improve the food safety and health of whole communities in Malawi whilst ensuring that exports are safe too.